After I announced that I had written a book about a school shooting, I received tons of comments saying stuff like, this book sounds like The Dirties. Was this book inspired by The Dirties? Hey, Mumkey, have you seen The Dirties? I bet you would like The Dirties. Now that I've finally watched the movie, I'm not quite sure why people thought I could relate to it. The film is about a high schooler who makes amateur films, is a social outcast, has a twisted, edgy sense of humor, and is obsessed with school shootings and violence. How the hell did you think that any of that would be relatable for me? I am God! Well, shit. It turns out this guy is almost a carbon copy of me from high school. The only way we would be more alike would be if he started spouting off jokes about Bane. I should be doing this whole thing as Bane. They call it Royale and cheese. God damn it. Within the first five minutes of the film, we realize that something bad is going to happen. Matt is an amateur filmmaker who is obsessed with making a film called The Dirties about a pair of heroes who take out an evil gang by the same name. This sounds innocent enough, but then in the next scene we find out that The Dirties is what Matt calls the group of kids that bully him in school. Uh-oh! Do you see where this is going? Since this is the month of retribution, I thought it would only be fitting to compare the story of Matt to the saga of Elliot Roger. I know that this is a movie and Elliot Roger was a real human being, but I think that comparing the two stories is essential for uncovering what writer-director Matt Johnson was able to pull off with this film. In my review of Elliot Roger, I talked a lot about empathy the ability to put yourself in somebody else's shoes in order to try and understand their experience. Because of Elliot's manifesto, I found it very easy to empathize with Elliot's emotional state because I found many of his issues to be relatable. I feel the same way about Matt, and in many ways it was very easy for me to empathize with him. But the big difference between Matt and Elliot that I would like to discuss is sympathy. Even though I can empathize with Elliot Roger, it is very difficult to form any sense of sympathy for him considering his crimes. But the strange thing is, with Matt, I do feel sympathy even when taking his crimes into consideration. So what's the difference? Matt and Elliot both committed a school shooting. What makes one sympathetic and the other not? Well, let's take a look. When it comes to sympathizing with characters that are committing crimes, the two components that I think about are motive and execution. Take Breaking Bad, for example. Walter White cooks crystal meth, steals chemicals, and eventually starts killing people. But up until a certain point, I still found him to be sympathetic. I understood why he was committing these crimes, and for a large chunk of the show, I didn't find his execution of these crimes to cross some sort of logical line. As for Elliot Roger, after reading his manifesto, I understood his motive, I understood why he wanted to commit a school shooting, but where he loses my sympathy is at the execution. Elliot's form of retribution was to massacre a building full of women whom he didn't know as a symbolic representation of his lifetime war against women. And when this plan failed, he instead shot random people on the streets of Isla Vista. I cannot sympathize with Elliot because his execution of this crime makes no sense to me. The equation of this crime looks like this. Lifetime isolation plus perceived rejection plus incredible entitlement equals massacre random people? For me, this definitely doesn't add up. Now we can look at Matt, and by observing the motive and the execution of his crime, we can understand what makes him a more sympathetic figure than Elliot Roger. Let's start with Matt's motive. This is a tale as old as time. The weird kids in school are getting bullied, and they want revenge on their tormentors. The twist here is that our main character records every single second of his life as a never-ending behind-the-scenes documentary of his existence. And this has convinced him that he is the hero of an actual movie. 
So, I guess you could say that The Dirties is a fake documentary movie about a guy who is filming a real documentary of the behind the scenes of a real movie and becomes convinced that he is the hero in a real movie, which is paradoxically both true and false. I tip my fedora to you, Matt Johnson. This is a level of meta-paradox that I haven't seen since the climax of The NeverEnding Story. The bullying that Matt and his friend Owen go through isn't just name-calling or occasional shoulder punches. This is the kind of shit that can leave a person living in constant fear whenever they step foot in school. Almost daily, one of the dirties will attack Matt or Owen, and this often leads to an all-out battle in the hallway. One day during gym class, somebody takes their clothes and soaks them in the showers, leaving them with nothing to wear and destroying their cell phones. The one thing Matt is passionate about is filmmaking. So naturally, when showing off his short film during film class, he gets mocked and laughed out of the room. You can see where Matt's deep-seated hatred of the dirties comes from, and why somebody who is convinced that they are the star of a movie would think of the dirties as the villains who must be defeated. Unlike Elliot Roger, Matt's version of retribution isn't a strictly personal one. He doesn't want to kill the dirties because they hurt him personally. He sees them as an evil gang that is tormenting everyone. Not only do they bully Matt, but they also physically harm his only friend Owen as well. In Matt's mind, the school would be a better, safer place for everyone if the dirties were eliminated. Keep in mind, it doesn't matter if Matt is correct or not, what we're focused on here is his perception, his motive for the crime. The question isn't, did Matt do the right thing, or even, was Matt justified? The question is, what makes Matt a sympathetic character? And in my opinion, Matt's heroic perception of the situation, wherein he wants to protect his best friend and all of the people around him, is a motive that evokes sympathy from me. While Matt's motive is effective at making him sympathetic, I think that his execution of the crime is what truly makes him stand out. In his quest to make his high school a better and safer place, one of Matt's top priorities is to make sure that the innocent students don't become afraid when they see him shooting people in the hallway. So he makes a shirt that says, We're just here for the bad guys. Matt receives schematics of the school and studies his targets to find out where they'll be at the time of the shooting so that he can best navigate his way through the school and take out the dirties one by one. If we think back to the logical equation of crimes, this one adds up far better than Elliot Rogers. The dirties are harassing my school, plus I want to protect my friend and fellow classmates, equals only shoot the dirties. The motive matches the execution of the crime in a perfectly logical way that Elliot Roger failed to follow through with. And in my opinion, this makes Matt a much more sympathetic character than Elliot Roger, even though on paper the two of them committed the same crime. The point of this video isn't to say that you have a right to kill people if you have a good motive, but rather to observe the ways in which a writer can craft a character who does bad things in a way that some might consider to be heroic. A relatable experience breeds empathy, and a relatable thought process breeds sympathy. In a world where the media likes to automatically declare criminals as monsters, it's nice to see a film like The Dirties prove that some monsters are only here for the bad guys.